Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. So today's plan was to actually wind the car back up to 26, 27 PSI and see how the gearbox held up, the DCT, with the JV4 and a little bit of power going through it. Um, however, the rain gods have not been nice to us. I don't even know if the GoPro's picking that up, but yeah, basically I can't even accelerate at map one uh, with the open diff. So that's not gonna happen today. We're not gonna be able to wind the power up, but what I thought I'd do is a video on the drivability of the DCT in a swapped car, because I think it's pretty much bang on as it would be in a, in a, a factory supply car. Uh, my thoughts on how it puts its power down, because it definitely puts its power down differently to the 6AT. In fact, it nearly caught me out this morning. And lastly, the most important thing, which I think most people are gonna be interested in, is what that M factory single mass flywheel really sounds like. So let's start with that. So I'm in a local shopping center car park and I'm gonna start it up and you guys can hear it. Seat belt helpers come out. Okay, so we'll just let everything quiet down. So I don't even know if the GoPro is gonna pick that up, but to me right now, the loudest thing in the car is the air conditioning. If I turn that off, then you can hear the single mass flywheel. Keep in mind as well, um, just to get your head around it, it's not actually the single mass flywheel that's making noise, it's the gearbox, the manual gearbox, well, the DCT, but basically the, the main shaft in the gearbox, when you're in neutral, obviously is free spinning. So that shaft is running all the way through the gearbox and spinning, because it's in neutral, and because there's no load on the gearbox, you just get that rattle or chatter through the gearbox. It's not actually the flywheel making noise. The reason the dual mass flywheels don't make the noise is they absorb that rattle. Um, they're a little bit of dampening in that chatter going backwards and forwards. It's probably not the right word. So that's what's actually happening. It's not the, the flywheel itself making the noise, or it does make that ka-ching just on start. I don't know if the, the camera picked it up. It's the gearbox. Anyway, I'll open the window and we've got a nice four-wheel drive next to us, so you'll you'll hear it a bit better there. Remember, no under trays on this car. Yeah, I don't think it's bad. Um, in fact. I can't think of why you would have an issue with the M Factory flywheel after driving with it for a few hours. Uh, what I am gonna do now, I'll put the AC back on. And there we go. The blower motor is now the loudest thing in the car. All right, let's go for a bit of a drive. I'll show you some different conditions and how the gearbox acts. So Ben from the Zero to 60 group chat, he has been in my ear about how important it is to get XHP on the car, and I will get XHP, maybe I might do it today, we'll see how we go. But he said the biggest and the best thing he liked about XHP was how it basically turns off creep with these cars. So, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you, but we'll go into reverse. And I'm gonna turn the fan down so you can sort of hear what's going on. Now, the second I let my foot off the brake, when it's safe to do so, the car, how cool the car park, oh. hang on, sorry, this is not the best, this million cars, it's COVID people, you could die. Okay, so as soon as you let your foot off the brake, the car starts creeping, and it, it really feels like, it's like if it was a manual, to make it do that, you'd have to be riding the clutch. Um, car parks are fun. Cool. And we can go again. In fact, I'll try and show you that again. That was probably a really bad display, but you get an idea of what the gearbox is like. So we're still, and foot off. And it moves straight away. So the, the really, the car is trying to move. I feel like the, the gearbox is trying to move all the time, and that's what this creep function is. Where apparently with XHP, it won't move until you touch the accelerator, which has got to be better on the clutch packs. Kind of worrying considering these clutch packs have 195,000 Ks on them or something. But all that said, mannerisms, parking the car, it behaves beautifully. Like, it's easy to drive. Now, let's get out on the road, and I'll show you the first thing that I don't like about it. Turn that AC down again. All right. So we're gonna pull out. And I'm just in D1, well, basically normal drive mode, normal automatic. And we're doing 40 Ks an hour, and we're in fourth already. It's pretty mental, all right, I got some traffic. And we'll keep going, we'll keep going. But guys,
guys, just try and pay attention to what gear we're in. So we're in second. It's doing all the shifting on its own. I'm very light on the throttle. Seventh gear at 60, and now I'm slowing down. Uh, it's downshifted. So the issue with that is, I feel that seventh gear at such low speeds is, it just, it, the car feels like it's laboring. It doesn't feel like it's nice on the engine. It feels like I'm loading the engine too much to be cruising around. Our E60 M5, when you're in the SMG mode one, it does exactly the same thing. It changes into seventh gear at about 65 Ks an hour. And even with, in the V10, when you've actually got like naturally aspirated power, like this has, no power when it's off boost. Even that, it feels bad. So what I have been doing, actually we'll do another acceleration, well, traffic acceleration. Also, please keep an ear out for that flywheel, like, I can't hear it. And... It's, it, it is very smooth, the gearbox is beautifully smooth, I'll say that much. I was kind of worried that with the old clutch packs it might be a bit dicky or might need some weird adaptations. So I slowed down to about 45 then and I needed to accelerate. So I added a little bit of throttle and it did downshift automatically. So that's pretty nice. In fact, as you would expect with an OEM calibration, the, the way it moves through the gears based on pedal position and speed is, it's pretty impressive. Hoping to get into seventh. I want to actually load it up in seventh for you guys. So sixth gear under 60 kilometers an hour again. It's madness. Ah, right, we're coming up to a faster bit. Bear with me, bear with me. And you can see it downshift. If you can't, oh, you bastards. All right, we got a red light. I'll bring you guys back once we're accelerating onto the hundreds. All right, turn the AC down again. Got a little bit of a um, little bit of a vibration. Then, is it let the clutch out? But I mean, not too bad. I was probably a little bit more aggressive on the throttle than I would normally. So anyway, hopefully we'll get up to seventh gear. We're in sixth at sixty. And there's seventh. So that there. I feel like I can just hear something through the gearbox. But again, it's not as loud as the wind noise, AC's right down, and it's probably not as loud as the tire noise. But yeah, we're not revving enough. It should be revving more at this sort of speed. Now we get up to 100, and she's all right. So that's my first issue. That took way longer to explain than I thought it would, but basically it's too slow to go through the gears in D mode. What I've been doing whilst I've been driving around this morning, and I've only done 50 kilometers in it, is D and sport mode. When sport mode is on, which you get the little sport logo there, it's nearly perfect. Like the way it goes through the gears is great. And when we do it, when we accelerate from the roundabout at the next junction, I'll show you how it goes through the gears in sport mode. And while we're at this highway speed, I'd just like to show you my paddles. We go one, two, three, down to fourth, even third, and then bam. Oh, it's good having paddles. Good having paddles. Okay, so coming up to a roundabout, you'll see how it downshifts in sports mode. I'm not touching the brake at the moment. Now I'm on the brake. Just lightly though, off the brake. And just coming to a stop. In D1, it always goes to D1, even in full auto mode, not sport. gear at about 40 going around the roundabout and accelerating off the roundabout. The shift
shifts are noticeably quicker in sports mode. I mean, they feel the shifts, and we're in seventh, but it changed into seventh at around 80, just over 80 Ks. And I think that works a lot better like with the way it loads up this car when it's off boost. Uh, I was gonna say, it shifts, it feels instantly quick, even in basic bottom of the range auto mode. However, in sports mode, the tone of the engine changes a little bit on the shift, where the engine doesn't really make any noise difference in full auto. It's, it must be a smoother transition, but you can hear it bring the revs down a little bit when it's in sports mode. All right, um, yeah, I guess the last thing to show you is full acceleration in sports manual. I've just noticed uh, it's starting to rain again. I thought the road was going to be dry, then we could wind it up a little bit. All right, we'll get to a safe spot and we'll do a um, proper acceleration. So I'm just cruising along again about 70 k's an hour. I just had a bit of a thought, I'm thinking about noise inside the cabin. So this car, when I fitted the BC coilovers with the spherical bearings and the strut tops, or solid mount strut tops, some people call them, they the road noise in the cabin increased quite a lot. Um, in fact, I was a little bit taken back by it at first, but you get used to it pretty quickly. I reckon that the the coilovers make as much noise in the cabin, if not more noise in the cabin, than the single mass flywheel has caused. That's probably the best way I could um, try and mm, compare the two noises. Again, once you're driving, once you've got the AC on, once you've got the radio on, you do not hear it. Sitting at the lights, in auto, like you can't really hear it pretty impressed with the lack of noise from it. Anyway, let's get this acceleration done because I want to document really what it accelerates like before we put XHP on it. Okay, now unfortunately for me, it's actually a properly wet road, but let's just show you how it will accelerate with traction on. God. That was a bit pointless because it was just traction all day long. Okay, just try it again. I can't accelerate. Nah, it's no good, no good. Um, bit annoying, um, but what can we say? So basically, the gearbox actually behaves quite well. Something I have found interesting, it seems to load the engine up a lot more. On that first night when I drove this, it, um, it put the JB4 into a safety mode and it was for lean. And what I think was actually happening, the, the JB4 was actually over boosting. So the, the JB4 obviously controls the wastegates and it's, it adapts its wastegate adaptations to get the car to boost at the right amount for the right RPMs. It was over boosting. I didn't actually realize what was going on, but it was making more boost early than it should. And I think what happens is in the six ATs, when it changes gear and you're at like mid throttle, which is how I was driving it that first night that it was out. The torque converter won't be locked up because you're not flat out, you're not trying to accelerate flat out. So the torque converter has a little bit of a slip and that slip takes load away from the engine and then the turbos don't make as much boost. Where with this, it really feels like the clutch is in and out and you're fully locked pretty damn quickly. So if you're mid throttle going one first, second, third, the load on the engine's actually increased and it makes the, the turbo spool faster versus how they spooled with the 618. Hope that makes sense. See, <laughs> it's fucked up. Ah. With the 618, you can do that, you click a gear and it won't keep spinning, but it spun straight away as I went into third gear then. It, um, you definitely gotta be paying a bit more attention with the DCT, although hopefully these problems won't be so pronounced once I've got an LSD. And I'm not doing this in the wet either. Ugh, it's pretty good though. Um, but yeah, takeaways. The main point of this video is gonna be that M factory flywheel. Um, it's not, you can hear me now, I mean, I'll go back to auto. We're in fifth gear doing 50, 50 kilometers an hour. 
can't really hear it. Little bit there, but yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know why these people have made so many complaints about the flywheel noise. All I can put it down to is if you're in your garage and you've got your window open and you start the car, you're gonna hear it because it's gonna echo off the walls. But for actual driving, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it at all. I like it, and hopefully it'll make it rev a little bit better. Um, one thing I will just end this video off, the other day I mentioned I couldn't activate launch control. That was because the MHD flash that I have on the car, which is a back-end flash, just to cause a bit more confusion, uh, I had kick-down disabled. So with the auto, I always have kick-down disabled on the flashes, and yeah, basically you need the kick-down to activate launch control. So I'll show you now, if I go sports mode, DTC, mash the brake, oh hang on, DTC, mash the brake and the throttle, hang on, what am I doing wrong? Oh, you got me a manual. Fifth time lucky, 5,000 RPMs, which would be absolutely ridiculous to try and launch this car at 5,000 RPMs. With the auto, I can't really launch it at 2,000 RPMs, so it would just blaze the tires. So definitely gonna have to get XHP to have some custom launch control. Can you set XHP to launch from 1500 RPM? <laughs> oh, I nearly don't need launch control. All right, let's end this video off here. Hopefully it's given you guys an idea on what the DCT swap drives like, it's mannerisms. It's really quite good. It behaves better than I thought it would. I don't know what I was expecting, but I'm very, very happy with it. Um, the way it loads the engine up and keeps it on boost through the gears is kind of scary. I know it's probably gonna be amplified in this wet weather, but it legit freaks me out sometimes. Like this morning, coming out of McDonald's, um, I short shifted, which in a 6AT car would take the load off the engine, it would slip the torque converter, and then go through the gear and slow the car down. This, it went second to third and just spun the rear wheels and it stayed in boost. It was kind of exciting. Anyway, ended off there. Thank you for watching. Loving the DCT so far. I might get XHP on it either tonight or tomorrow, depending on how long this video takes to edit. And then we'll go through a similar process tomorrow with XHP and talk about how it's changed the mannerisms. Guys, thank you for watching. We're getting there, we're getting there. Oh, M-Factory Flywheel, she's all right.